My mother is the devil. <laughs> She's a terrible, awful woman. We don't get along, we never have. I would call her a cunt, but she's not that deep and she's not that warm. <laughs> As a stand-up comedian and master of my own domain, I spend a lot of time telling stories about my crazy mother. They're very funny. She does not like that I tell stories at her expense. She believes she is owed some sort of royalty. <laughs> she doesn't understand why she's not being paid for my success in talking about her. She will tell you that everything I say about her is a lie. You may take that for what you will. <laughs> She does not want me telling stories about her. She took out a restraining order to stop me from telling stories about her. <laughs> On stage, there was a gag order. For 18 months, I was told, you cannot talk about your mother on stage. You will be arrested for violation of a restraining order. <laughs> I have to tell you, all that made me want to do <laughs> was tell stories about her. So in my head, I thought, well, I mean, what's she going to do, come to every show? So I, I kept telling stories about her, and uh, what she had done is hire a private investigator. <laughs> to record said shows, and I was arrested four times. <laughs> for talking about my mom on stage. Uh, <laughs> the, the problem with it was, uh, once you are arrested, uh, in Louisiana, which, which is where it happened. I, let me tell you how. Uh, I got a Facebook message from the sheriff <laughs> that said, I don't know where you are, but your mother has sworn out an arrest uh, and you have to return to Louisiana to answer it because it's a felony to violate a protective order. They said I might as well have shot her. Fuck, I didn't even know that was an option. <laughs> Y'all could have said this to begin with. Um, so, uh, they tell me that I have, uh, they're going to give me a chance to turn myself in. I need to come back to Louisiana and answer these charges. Otherwise, there is a felony warrant out for my arrest, and if I am stopped for so much as not wearing a seatbelt or speeding, they will arrest me on site and extradite me back to Louisiana. <laughs> That didn't sound fun. That didn't sound fun to be, I feel like I saw that on like a, a bad prison movie, like the extradition bus, right? You're all chained to each other. It just didn't, that's not part of my story. So I go back to Louisiana uh, and I turn myself in. Now I knew they were going to take a mug shot of me when I got there. So I called up my friend who does hair and makeup. <laughs> I was like, girl, I'm going viral today, so I need you to fix me up. So she fixes me up, and I go to turn myself in, and it is Columbus Day. And they're not, they're not taking people. There's no intake on Columbus Day. So my two best friends who, who had gone with me, childhood friends, who had gone with me to turn myself in, I turned around, I'm like, one more day of freedom! <laughs> and we went out and proceeded to just get wasted and stoned and do the things that one does when you've been given a reprieve from jail. <laughs> the next morning I get a call that I need to get uh, down to the police station quickly 
because they're doing intakes. And if I don't want to wait and be there all day, I need to get down there quickly. So I just grabbed my stuff and, and hauled ass out the door to get there. Uh, the hair and makeup <laughs> from the day before. was not apparent anymore. I looked like I'd been hit with a Mack truck. And uh, I, I, I get to the jail. Now, it's a small town, so they all know me. So literally when I get there, like a kid who, who cheated off of me in algebra in high school is fucking intaking me, right? This is the guy. And he's like, man, you was funny back in school, right? He's, Writing it up, writing it up. And they have to take pictures of, of me for the mugshot. They have to take pictures. I have a lot of tattoos. They have to take pictures of all my tattoos in case I'm ever apprehended again. They can, they can know it's me. <laughs> so uh, I get put in a room. with the, the, the jail is full. So I get put in a room with 15 other women who have all committed real crimes. <laughs> they've, all, they've all really done something wrong. I learned a lot. A girl named Kayla taught me how to sneak Zan bars up my ass for the next time I was arrested. I didn't even know what a Zan bar was. It turns out it's like a lot of Xanexes uh, stacked into a little bar. And if you shove them into the right corner of your ass, you can get at them very easily later. She told me she needed them. She had four kids. Okay, so <laughs> this is true. This is true. So my mom uh, has had me arrested. I, I am there waiting to be processed. I'm in the room. And everyone's going around the room talking about what they've done. <laughs> One girl is like, I, you know, I can't stop taking the Xanax. They keep finding me with my kids. And I'm all fucked up. And I'm like, oh, that's... That's bad, right? And then the, the next girl is like, yo, I robbed this motherfucker with a gun. And I, I was like, oh, all right, oh, okay. And then they go to the next girl and she's like, yeah, I beat the shit out of my husband. And, and then they get to me. <laughs> so, well, uh, I talked about my mom. <laughs> and you know these bitches looked at me like something was wrong with They were like, that's your mother. <laughs> Kayla pipes up, you only get one mama in this world. And it was right then, in that cell, that I decided I was never going to talk about my mother again. <laughs> you guys laugh, but I'm going to be arrested for this. <laughs> Thank you so much.